going to interrupt you because um, I need to talk now. We'll come back to you in a moment, but we need to go over straight over to our political editor, uh, Laura Koonsberg. Laura, what have you got to tell us? Good morning, Carrie. Well, I've just um, discovered that the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, has tested positive for coronavirus. He's understood to have mild symptoms. Um, he will self-isolate in number 10 and will still be in charge of the government's approach to how they're handling the crisis. But obviously, this is a significant moment. Um, Boris Johnson, of course, has been in close contact with um, the government's chief scientists and all the people who are in hot charge of trying to handle how the government's various responses are going. But he is now himself having this like mild symptoms understood to have tested positive for the infection. Hi folks, I want to bring you up to speed with something that's happening today, which is that I've developed mild symptoms of the coronavirus, that's to say a temperature and a persistent cough. And on the advice of the chief medical officer, I've taken a test that has come out positive. So I am working from home, I'm self-isolating, and that's entirely the right thing to do. Uh, but be in no doubt that I can continue, and thanks to the wizardry of modern technology, to communicate with all my top team to lead the national fight back against coronavirus. And I want to thank everybody who's involved. I want to thank, of course, above all our amazing NHS staff. It was very moving last night to join in that national clap uh, for the NHS. This analysis seeks to conclude in a detailed trend forecast for the US and UK coronavirus infections and deaths into the end of April, the importance of which being to act as indicators for the primary driver for stock market trends since mid-February. Whereas was the case with my preceding forecast since the end of March, deviations against the coronavirus trend warned of worse prospects for the stock prices as the US and UK failed to follow the South Korean model. UK coronavirus trend forecast into the end of April 2020. This analysis was first made available to patrons who support my work on the 23rd of March 2020. So for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecasts, then do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for just $3 per month. The UK government started the ball rolling in announcing a number of measures in attempts at slowing the parabolic curve that the pandemic was on. First of which was to close all schools as of Friday 20th of March, which in my opinion was about two weeks later than they should have closed the schools. Still in terms of pandemic timeline, it is about five days ahead of when Italy closed all of its schools. So should help resolve towards a better outcome. The second announcement was to order all restaurants, pubs and clubs to close. Again, a positive development and ahead of the curve in relation to where Italy was. However, just firmly asking the British people to stay at home has largely fallen on deaf ears, as most have carried on as usual given the weekend's mad rush to enjoy the sunshine by flocking to parks, countryside and seaside in their millions. Huge Crowds busy mingling and infecting one another, which does not bode well for what to expect in terms of infection numbers one to two weeks down the road. So the key mistake that the UK has made is not to order a national lockdown on the 20th of March. And with every day that Britain delays announcing a lockdown is going to result in a steeper curve. Thus Britain needs to announce a national lockdown immediately as delaying it by four or five days will just put Britain on precisely the same track as Italy. So I expect an imminent UK national lockdown, which like earlier school closures than Italy, should give the UK a small advantage in terms of pandemic outcomes. But first they have to actually announce the lockdown, which as of writing there is little sign of. Perhaps the lockdown will come Monday or Tuesday. Anyway, each day delay takes the UK one step closer to becoming Italy. In terms of the number infected, well, the UK is pretty much on a similar trend trajectory as Italy, where the existing trend trajectory is for 17,000 by the end of March, which suggests the UK is going to trend to 
more than 100,000 by the end of April, probably exceeding Italy's total by a good 20,000, given that temperatures are colder here and with less sun. So the virus can survive for longer on surfaces. Therefore, my final conclusion is that the UK is targeting a trend to 123,000 officially recorded infections by the end of April 2020, which on a case fatality rate of 6.6% resolves to 8,100 deaths. That compares against today's figure of 233 with the trend trajectories as illustrated by my graph. This would likely result in herd immunity among 3.7 million people, i.e. 30 times the official number testing positive. So quite some distance from the 40 million that the UK was previously galloping towards, which also confirms that there will be several more pulses of infections as lockdowns are relaxed, but are likely to be less extreme as each subsequent wave will result in a greater herd immunity and thus make it harder for the virus to spread. So this first wave is likely to be by far the worst in terms of the number of deaths, as more people end up in hospitals sooner, as there's nothing had been done to slow down the spread of the virus and no one had immunity in the population to slow its spread. And the rest of this extensive analysis that concludes in a detailed coronavirus trend forecast for both the US and UK, which is followed by stock market implications, has first been made available to patrons who support my work. So, for immediate first access to all of my analysis and trend forecasts, do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work because there is a silver lining in this dark cloud which you'll find out if you subscribe. And do remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos in this series as we face the oncoming coronavirus storm. The next three weeks are not gonna be good. They're gonna be dis catastrophic.